What's up feller builders? Thanks for tuning in to this next video. In this video we're going to be covering a lot of good subjects. Some awesome chipping methods, some rust effects, how to use clear sulfame tape like Christmas wrapping tape, and some more chipping methods, and some easy wire. Let's get into it. It is finally time for the Tamiya P38 Lightning. This is a superb kit, probably the best in history, and it was really fun building this. So we get on to these parts. It is self-explanatory. This kit is superbly engineered and built, and there's nothing wrong with it. As you can see, the kit features a lot of really nice recessed panel lines and nice smooth surfaces, interior details, and uh, even a lot of landing gear bay details that a lot of kits don't offer. The instructions are very detailed and they go through each and every step in which you need to complete before assembling and finishing the model, which is nice because some just say, okay, put this together and then paint it. Whereas this kind of lays it out where it shows you what you need to paint first. It has a really nice color decal sheet and is very explanative on what you need to do. The interior was very simple, uh, but also really detailed, which is nice. All the parts fit together well, and it came out to be really good. I'm spraying the interior with flat black. Assembling all these interior parts, each interior part fits to the next part literally perfectly. Just use a little Tamiya Thin CA and you're good to go. I paint the inside with Chromate Green, as this is what the instructions called for. Since the instructions were so detailed, I just went ahead and followed the instructions on all the things that I needed to paint black, silver, etc. Uh, exactly what the instructions said to do. So this cockpit is literally exactly what the instructions said to do other than one little red lever. And I looked up a lot of reference photos for the interior P-38s and it was pretty accurate. Honestly, the only thing it didn't cover was these little tiny pegs, which you, you paint white and red anyways, so really not that big of a deal. I then go ahead and silver the interior of the model, making sure to bring out all those raised and recessed panel lines that um, silvering tends to do when you do this process. I chose to use chrome on this part. Uh, usually I use aluminum, but I want maybe a little bit more shine out of this, so I, I picked some Vallejo chrome. Now I can apply the decals to the interior of the kit as they did come with a nice decal set. And uh, I was surprised Tamiya doesn't have the best reputation for decals, but these ones went on pretty good. Just a lot of micro fit and time and patience uh, to put this on and not get frustrated, but it did work out well and it went on fine. Then I'm using some chip chipping methods to the rest of the interior to make it look weathered. This is the final product of the interior of the P38 and it turned out really, really good. There's still more to come in just a few minutes to finish up the rest of this cockpit and assemble the fuselage, so stay tuned. I paint the inside of this chrome uh, as I want to keep any anything kind of, you know, fresh. And then I paint this side of the uh, fuselage uh, chromate green like before. I can then assemble, start assembling the um, landing gear bay doors. This is the nose gear, and I just paint all that stuff chrome, glue it together, and weather it separately, or weather it all together. I'm just using some muddy wash from AK Weathering, and that seems to work pretty good, but you got to wait. You have to prime all of your uh, surfaces before you use this stuff, or else it'll just take the paint right off. But if you prime it, then it won't take the paint off. Now I can insert the cockpit and start assembling the plane. So this P-38 came in a lot of different uh, sizes and shapes besides of what the airplane came in. And it also comes with nose weights as well. So it came in a bunch of little tiny pieces. This was the biggest piece of them all was the top. The rest was all little tiny pieces. But you can see there, it includes all the nose weight and that just makes it super handy for um, just really convenient to just put it in there, you don't have to buy anything, and you got a nicely nicely made kit that balances on its own. I can then assemble all of these extra parts and uh, start just using up that Tamiya Thin Cement. Now, of course, when you snip these parts, they snip off perfectly. And when you trim these parts, you have to trim them perfectly because they are literally so perfect. Uh, so just make sure you trim all the parts and put in the lights. And, uh, and then you can make sure that, you know, you have nice, nicely smooth lines. Some of the areas I trimmed a little bit too much off, so I had to fill it. But that's 
to show. This is the rest of the interior. Again, a lot of depth and interior deta detail when it comes to these parts, and I'm just super pleased with the kit that the inside looks really good. Um, the Revel kit wasn't too bad. It had a lot of these details, but it sure wasn't to the extent of how much depth this kit has. This time I'm priming with Vallejo Olive Drab, and then I'm going to paint it with Chrome Green. This will make sure the weathering process goes much more smoothly than I thought. This is the first time using AK, and I didn't know what it would do. I then paint the areas that need black, black, according to the instructions. I don't know if it, the instructions were too accurate on this, but I still like the, the placement of the colors, so I just went with it. I'm just using Vallejo Black on these parts as um, it will all get a matte coat and also a whole bunch of other different um, weathering techniques to bring those detailed surfaces out. And so the finish won't be actually gloss. So, um, so yeah, and I'm also using steel on these parts as well. So that it gives it a nice little contrast to the other parts that I, that I painted chrome. And I painted this cushion black as that's what the instruction said to do and I think it was actually kind of accurate. Some were brown, some were black, so it didn't really matter to me. These decals went on just fine and I can then install all of these extra parts in the cockpit. A little fiddly just because it's such a perfect fit, but once you get it in there, it doesn't even come off. Honestly, you probably didn't even have to glue it. I decided to use the uh, the decal strip of um, the seat belts just because one, I've never used the decal strips of seat belts before, and I thought it looked nice enough to put in there. Now I can cut my uh, canopy out. Now it's unfortunate that these are um, not laser cut because I feel like they could do that. I feel like they're a big enough company that they could figure out how to laser cut their prints and just make it easier for people for a seventy dollar kit, but. Uh, you know whatever it, they still come out good and you know it just takes a steady hand and it probably took me an hour to cut all these things out and honestly it didn't take that long now i'm assembling the gun sight here and gonna move on to the next step as you can see the gun sight is super detailed and uh just looks super cool you end up applying this with some clear glue into the inside of the cockpit and then assemble the um, front part of the fuselage now i can glue these all in with some clear glue and start taping off this thing now, I still have not decided whether I like pre-cutting the uh, mask or I just like cutting it on the glass because it seems to me that these raised edges are big enough to where if I put Tamiya tape on it, it would be fine and I'd be able to see them and I'd be able to cut it just fine on the glass. But um, cutting out these things, they obviously didn't come out exactly perfect the way I might want them to. I had to do a lot of extra trimming to make sure it was perfect. Um, but in the end, I really do honestly feel like this was the quicker step and the less dangerous one. So um, I still have not decided whether it's better or not. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, whether it's easier for you or not. Now I'm painting this part interior green as to make it look like it's the inside of the cockpit. Clear parts don't take the paint well, so I do not mix any water in my paint when I do this step, just to make sure that it gets a good bond and it covers the clear part perfectly. Now I can prime it in black. Now I prime my blacks because of one of the comments that one of my viewers suggested to me. Um, it worked. I have to tell you this. Thank you so much for the tip because it worked. It worked great. So you told me to increase the PSI to 30 PSI. Uh, I'm using Vallejo Black Service Primer and, um, and I also thinned it down like 70 30 and uh, it really did work I had to put a bunch of coats on it that's why you don't see much of me painting it but it did work then I painted it medium gray as the instructions suggest and this is a Vallejo color and then I opted to paint some panels a lighter type tone of gray I just added some white drops to that paint and then set it and I use little sticky note paper to do this as it doesn't rip the paint off no matter how quick or uh, long you wait for that paint to dry now I saw some reference photos of this actual aircraft having these lines um, it looks like they're like I don't know what you call them I didn't research what they were called but they had these lines and it was a really cool feature I wanted to uh, put on this model as it gave it a lot of depth and a lot of detail that I really liked and honestly, once I see a reference photo that looks difficult, uh, I kind of can't really help myself when it comes to it. I have to be crazy and just go for it. So that's kind of what ended up, ended up, ended up happening. I was like, well, I could do this or that, but I ended up just being like, 
mm, let's just bite the bullet and go for it. And it was fun. Now we can just see some satisfying tape pulling. Um, as you can see, it did not pull off any of my tape as Vallejo primer has been tried and true and I uh, have not ever had any problems with it yet. Uh, knock on wood. So uh, here I'm using some blue tack to mask off where my green is gonna go on top of this gray. Now I have really hard time uh, with this blue tack. So I use my paintbrush to just roll it onto the aircraft and then it sticks way better than to just stick it on with your thumb and then have to peel it off halfway and da 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 da. So yeah, just uh, stick it on the model is w roughly where it goes and then adjust your shape with a paintbrush rolling it on nice and firmly to the, to the model. Now, in order to achieve that um, lighter color underneath the uh, the actual color of the airplane as when it goes to those stripes around the engine area, I actually applied uh, this green coat with a lot of white in it. It was like 50-50 olive drab to white um, paint ratio and um, eh, a little bit of water in there too. So I just applied that to the whole model and it ended up being a little bit too light, so just be wary of that. I also made sure to bring my gray lines all the way up so that these lines actually connected to the model, which was a nice touch and detail that I decided to do because uh, if they didn't touch, it might not look right. I'm carefully applying this tape and with this Vallejo primer, just wait for it a day to dry or like even four hours. Um, probably is the maximum that I let this dry just so that your tape sticks to it and doesn't pull any tape off or any paint off. It's just a, a good recommended dose. Um, these I saw in the reference photo and uh, they, I just wanted to make it as accurate as possible which actually I tend not to do sometimes. I tend to avoid reference photos because it gets me in a whole lot of trouble like this. But it ended up working. I put on some regular colored olive drab just striped it on a nice even coat and then applied weathering effects later. So here I'm applying just some nice dark brown um, to my panel lines as I wanted a different effect this on this model. I usually just go ahead for the straight black panel line wash but I really wanted a different effect. So I went ahead and used the uh, a dark brown and, uh, and adjusted these panel lines accordingly as I was gonna do some lighter shading and other olive drab effects later. So I just went around lightly on each panel line, just going all around them, uh, making sure that it was dark enough that I liked and it had enough uh, contrast to the model itself. As you can see, it works really good as the real one actually had this type of effect around those painted areas and those striped areas. So I left the tape on for now during this effect because I wanted to mimic that picture as much as possible. And since I only put the tape around the engine areas and the nose, I didn't think to do it around any other area, but as you can see, this green is way too light. So you can see how I fix this in a minute. But pulling this tape is still really satisfying still. So you can see here that that green is so light, like it looks like an interior of a Spitfire or something. So I ended up watering down some olive drab and just coating that area with a nice light coat, making sure to not ruin all my work. And that seemed to work pretty well. I carefully went around those areas and then I can pull this uh, sticky tack off. Even though the sticky tack is really expensive, it was totally worth using it as I didn't have any problems, any leak throughs, um, literally no problems whatsoever. I had barely, I had two touch ups, which usually I have like four or five. So, um, yeah, and the touch-ups were my fault. I didn't put the tape on enough. But you can see here how nicely those, those lines came out and uh, just a really good contrasted look and it's just really, really sharp. Now I can assemble the parts that uh, I painted separately. That includes these, the tail and the rudder surfaces. As you can see, they slide in literally perfectly. And if you saw me do my Rebel kit, you can tell that this kit went together a lot differently. I don't even think I glued these tail surfaces on. Now I can assemble the decals. The decals were actually in fair condition. Uh, for Tamiya decals, they were not bad at all. They were just some precautionary steps that I had to take. First of all, I used Microset and Microsole instead of Mr. Hobby's um, uh, decal solution. It just makes it a lot more usable and uh, doesn't ruin your paint job. Also, I only stuck these in for like into the water for like a second and as soon as they got movable, I moved them. The props were assembled and then painted 
the way they needed to be painted after they were assembled. So I painted these with uh, some Vallejo black and um, now I'm just using a very light coat of the same color that I put on the fuselage um, so that it doesn't uh, it doesn't have too many paint strokes in it. Now I'm cutting out a mask so that I can spray these tips as the kit did include some yellow tips but I tried them out and that was just a pain in the butt. Honestly this was just easier to do rather than trying to figure out those decals that are um, yellow tips. That was just a waste of time. I painted it white first and then yellow, and it turned out really good. Now the prop is finished other than weathering it, and I can paint these guns and do all the little touch-ups that are left. I just ended up doing some chipping and silvering on these guns. I didn't do too much. Now I'm applying clear tape to these wheels, as then I can cut them out, and I also brushed off the, the tape on my hand a little bit just to get it oiled up so that it didn't pull uh, the paint off too much. I trimmed it out and pulled the seal off and now I can just paint it and not have any problems. This method worked really well just so you know. Um, uh, make sure it was primed, make sure it was painted, two coats, make sure you put a clear coat on it, let it dry for two days and then use that tape because it will pull paint off if you don't do the proper procedure. Now I'm painting these with uh, some rubber black and I'm doing these also this area in rubber black as well to mimic a smoke stream Just like the real thing had And when you get to this point, please don't do this get the edge off Don't make it for a video like I do and just rip it off with your hand and put it on the table get it on the model I spent way too much time trying to video record that part. <laughs> it was literally ridiculous. But anyways, so here I'm just painting some silver and you can see I got some nice good circular uh, lines with this brush. Um, this is one of the brushes I've gotten off Amazon. Super cheap and super easy to use. Also do with these wheels. Um, yeah, I couldn't be happier with this process as usually I get it all over the wheel and then have to repaint it dot dot dot. Now I'm using some MIG wash for the top as this wash you just have to wipe off with a dry rag so that makes it really really nice for if you just want to do these panels as I did a lot of airbrushing work already and I didn't want to lose that effect so here you can see I'm just drying it off with a regular uh, dry paper towel and this works just splendidly um, you have to rub it a little bit if it's not completely dry but the longer you wait to dry I think the better it should be completely dry when you go through and do this step but I decided I, I was ready to finish this model, so super excited, so I just did it. Now I can assemble the landing gear and put this thing on the table, get the props on, and, uh, and take some pictures. The landing gear are super high quality as they go on nice and they also have little pegs in the wheels so that the wheels stick on good. Also, another tip too, um, this was the easiest uh, landing gear door hatches I've ever done in all of my modeling it, they literally went in like a glove it was miraculous i didn't even glue them in because i was so happy i was like oh my gosh this is awesome i've never had this much of uh, easy time with these stupid landing gear doors so thank you tamia for actually inventing a system that uses the tamia door and makes it applicable to actually glue the model nicely here i'm using some chipping methods as you can see uh just lightly Putting on all, the, on all the aircraft as many different patterns as I can to make sure that model looks really worn in and torn in as the real thing actually did look pretty beaten up. Actually for this uh, I'm using some steel Vallejo paint um, as it just gives it a little bit extra contrast as I've used a couple different other paints to, to mimic this effect and I just wanted it a little bit different this time. Now nobody ever told me this, but I actually keep my sponge a little wet um, as I feel like it's easier and it gets the paint splotches better. But you have to be way more careful with the step as it can apply way too much. So just keep a wet finger around and yeah, and then you'll be fine. Now I can put on the props and get to the next step, which is taking off the mask. This is the most satisfying part of the build for me as it means that I am done painting or done airbrushing, everything like that. Uh, yeah, super happy with the, how the mask turned out as um, afterwards, after reviewing and 
this I think is the easiest method to go about a mask is having it a lined cut I mean obviously the easiest way is to have a laser cut piece but cutting them out on a sheet is super easy and I think it is easier than um, cutting it out on the on the model itself tearing these off is is really nice and you can see all the nice clear parts stayed clear and there's no leak throughs in the paint Especially when it came to this area, I kind of really enjoyed the fact that I cut this out early and didn't have to cut it out on the model, so there was that. If you remember early in the video, I used some temporary glue on these pieces so that I can take them off and put those detailed parts in and then finish the model, as they are perfect fit and didn't need any filler. Now I can assemble these lines. So I'm using easy wire and this is a really easy way to get some nice wire on your airplane as you just take a little bit of CA and attach those lines and do a lot of holding. I assemble the lines as the box art describes it and I looked online to see where exactly these lines actually came onto the contact of the airplane online and I found that these are the rough areas that, that uh, they go on. So it was good enough for me and good enough for the finished model as I tried to trim as close to that little area as possible so that there was no glue or anything uh, residue or uh, easy line left over. Just doing this simple step, step to your models is a, a huge thing. This stuff costs $4 for a roll you won't go through in five years. And uh, just a really, really nice step to give an extra step of life to your model. Uh, if you don't have the easy line, you can get online. I'm pretty sure any, any hobby store has it. And uh, you just trim it off with a knife when you're done and you're good to go finished model is here boys so thank you guys so much for watching if you made it through this whole video thank you so much consider subscribing as it really helps me out as a content creator i try to just keep producing these videos at least three models a month so so just keep tuning in to my stuff as uh, i got a lot of things planned i got some b29s planned i got a whole bunch of stuff up here so um stay tuned and uh, thank you guys so much again for watching and uh, my motto is let's get back to building you guys take it easy and thanks again for watching Thank you.